What's up guys, Doll Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Fat Electrician video. This one's a little bit different though. I did not know he did, uh, I guess pop culture stuff. So this is Top Gun Maverick. They copied Star Wars. Now, I have not seen Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I think that's the new one, right? The one that just came out, I think it was last year. I, I have not seen it yet. I, I actually heard it's pretty good. Apparently it's one of the best movies to come out in the past couple years. Uh, but I don't really watch many movies, so... Yeah, I'm, uh, when it comes to, like, pop culture stuff, I'm kind of behind. I have seen Star Wars, though, and I gotta say, I think Star Wars is probably the most overrated franchise. Everyone loves it, especially, like, the original trilogy, and if you're younger, the prequels. Not not many people really like the new ones. I, people are always complaining about them. But I think they're all overrated. Even the, the original trilogy is just, I don't know, I find it way overrated. But anyway, this isn't me ranting about Star Wars. This is him ranting about Top Gun copying Star Wars. So, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it new Top Gun movie, so this is your spoiler alert. Ladies and gentlemen, this movie is fantastic. I've watched it once, and I'm probably going to go watch it again. There's a good reason it's fantastic, because it blatantly ripped off Star Wars. <laughs> Don't believe me? Let's get a side-by-side -side comparison, shall we? Okay, so to start off, we've got our young male protagonist whose father died when he was a child. He is watched over from afar his whole childhood by his father's old best friend, who's also kind of sort of quasi-responsible for his father's death. Our main character is going to come of age and realize that he wants to follow his father's footsteps and become a warrior. Dad's old friend will then reluctantly take him under his wing to teach him. After the completion of said training, he'll be sent out on a very dangerous mission to destroy an enemy weapon of mass destruction. Luke will be sent to destroy the Death Star. And Wait, so... Does Buddy come back? Uh, is there gonna be like a Darth Vader moment in this? The rooster has to take out a uranium refining facility. And the only way to do either of these missions is for a small group of fighters to go at low altitude to avoid anti-aircraft weapons, and at high speeds to avoid enemy fighters who, quite frankly, look nothing alike. <laughs> now, the only way to take out a Death Star is to hit a ventilation shaft that is approximately two meters across with two proton torpedoes. Whereas Rooster actually has it easier because the ventilation shaft that he has to hit with a rocket is three meters across. Huge difference. Luckily, though, right before the main battle scene, both of the main characters will hear the voice of their mentor in their head. Luke will be told to use the force and trust his feelings, and Rooster will be told not to think about it. So <laughs> similar, but whatever. Now in both movies, another character is actually going to fire at the ventilation shaft first, and for one reason or another, it's not enough. So that means it's our main character's time to shine. And wouldn't you know it, both of our main characters end up having to take the game-winning shot without any type of guidance technology. Luke just elects not to use his because he trusts his feelings more, whereas Rooster's guidance system is jammed, so he just has to make do. I'm trying to tell you- Man, they, li <coughs> they literally did just straight rip off Star Wars, didn't they? I mean, I, I guess to some degree all movies are the same, right? It's the hero's journey thing, but this is like a little too specific. Both characters have to swag the game-winning shot. And for those of you that don't know, swag is a scientific wild-ass guess. As fate would have it, they drain the one-in-a-million half-court shot, thus creating a chain reaction that destroys both facilities. Now, it's at this point in filming that the directors of Top Gun realize that they filmed the entire movie with F-18s. And Star Wars did the whole thing with X-Wing fighters, and X-Wing fighters do that cool attack stance thing where their wings change. And they weren't about to get out cool guide by George Lucas, so they're gonna have to have both main characters get shot down separately and then somehow find each other. And then together, they'll magically stumble across an F-14 Tomcat. Which is like... <laughs> so she's gonna be, like, hanging out there? Like, how did they even find this? I kinda... But this honestly... It it's not really selling me on the movie, it just kind of makes it seem like there's a lot of plot holes here. One of the only American aircrafts that can change its wing pattern mid-flight. And needless to say, at some point during this long series of events, our main character- Man, I feel they were straight up just, like, do it, doing the Star Wars ripoff on purpose. Like, they're like, you know what sells well? Star Wars. Let's just literally make Star Wars, but without space magic and fucking alien wizards and stuff will have their lives put in jeopardy when the enemy fighter pilot gets behind them and is about to shoot them down. Luckily, they have plot armor and the most arrogant character in the entire film <laughs> will appear seemingly out of nowhere and shoot down the enemy pilot, thus saving the day. And if that's not enough to persuade you, at the beginning of the movie, Tom Cruise is flying some experimental aircraft that can go Mach 10, which sounds an awful lot like a hyper jump to me. And this all just <laughs> happened in Top Gun A New Hope. I can't wait to see what happens in Top Gun North Korea Strikes Back. Or Top Gun Return of the Ace, where Rooster gets training from a legendary pilot from World War II. In Conclusion, Top Gun is <laughs> Man, could you imagine? Bro, he'd be like 100 years old. Uh, honestly, he'd be like 150 if they waited as long to release another one. Still definitely worth seeing. I certainly really enjoyed it. But at the end of the day, it's just Star Wars with Tom Cruise and no Wookiees. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do so is to buy yourself some merch or join the Unhealth Care Club available at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. Man, that actually kind of did the opposite of selling me on the movie. Because I don't think Star Wars is that good. So now that I know this is kind of just a Star Wars ripoff, I kind of don't want to see it. Which is a little bit disappointing because it was one of those movies that 
I heard from most people was actually pretty good, but then again, most people like Star Wars, and I mean, Star Wars isn't bad, but it's just like it's good, mindless entertainment, right? Kind of like a lot of the older Marvel movies. The, the new ones are pretty aggressively bad, but the, the older ones, a lot of them were just you know good, mindless entertainment. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.